Good afternoon. Um, my name is Hussein, and uh, I am with uh, the Netflix uh, recommendation team. And uh, I'm going to talk about um, a particular area in recommendation, which is to balance uh, our recommendations for different modes of consumption by the users. And uh, in a specific case, we're going to focus on continuation and discovery modes on um, Netflix, which I'll talk um, in more detail. Um, so I'm going to first give a background about Netflix and its recommendation system, and um, then we'll focus on the main topic, which is uh, balancing different modes of recommendation. And uh, finally, I'll hand uh, some concluding remarks. So Netflix started as a company 20 years ago, and, but started streaming uh, 10 years ago in 2007. Uh, during that 10 years, uh, Netflix has now reached uh, about or more than 93 million uh, members, uh, which um, is in 190 countries. We cover uh, or we support more than 1,000 types of devices. And, and specifically in U.S., we are in uh, about half of the U.S. broadband households, and uh, we, our members consume about a third of the peak traffic when you know streaming from Netflix. So many of you might have heard of Netflix recommendations through the Netflix Prize. This was a uh, contest that was um, mainly um, about predicting the star ratings for Netflix. The star rating was uh, our main mode of recommendation at that time when we were uh, mostly a DVD shipping company. And uh, the goal was to be able to predict how many stars a member will give to a movie or a TV show um, if they rate it. And that's given their, previous, their history of previous ratings. Um, the contest uh, had, well, the goal was to improve the, you know, the current accuracy by 10% to win a million dollars. And that was concluded in 2009. Um, but since then, uh, both the business and the recommendation system has evolved uh, a lot. And now we have recommendations in many more aspects of our service. And in fact, you might have heard uh, that you know, last week, I think, we announced that we are actually retiring the star rating system. And we are opting for a, like a thumbs-based system because it basically makes it easier for members to rate. But that's only a small aspect of our recommendation system. So where do we want to go with the recommendations? Um, this is where we want to ideally be. We want you um, to turn on Netflix, and the absolute best content for you would just start playing without any action on your side. Um, this is a pretty ambitious goal, and we have a long way to get there. So in our team, Meanwhile, we have an intermediate goal, which is to create a page of recommendations where the titles that you are more likely to play and enjoy are placed in the best positions of the page, so, which basically means we help you find that best content for you uh, in the you know, easiest way. So if you open uh, the Netflix app um, and see the home page on any device, um, Pretty much everything that you see on that home page is a recommendation. So we have a grid of rows that are, uh, each have their own themes. And within each row, there are a number of titles. And the selection of the rows and the titles and the rankings are all um, driven by machine learning. And even the image that represents each movie or TV show is also optimized by machine learning. And overall, over 80% of what our, net, our, our members watch are driven by our recommendations. So let's now move on to the, to the specific area that um, is the topic of this talk, which is um, understanding different modes of watching and optimizing or uh, you know, balancing our recommendations for those. Um, so what do I mean by different modes of watching? Here are some examples. Um, a member, when they open the app, might be in continuation mode, which is they have watched the title before, maybe a TV show last night, and they want to continue that. That's what I call continuation mode. And uh, we have a row that's dedicated for that mode. 
uh, which is called continue watching. Um, you might be in the list watching mode, which is you had previously added the content to your list, and now you want to find that title from your list and watch it. And we have a row called my list, uh, which is basically for that. Um, there are other modes. For example, you might be in rewatch mode. You might feel like watching Goodwill Hunting for the 12th time. So you want to just you know, um, go to that row if it if appears on your page. And uh, this is the, you know, there is a specific row called Watch It Again, which, whose task is to bring those titles that we feel you think you're more likely to want to rewatch. And um, if none of the above, you might be just in discovery mode, where, which is, I just want to find something new to watch today. Um, so I'm going to focus mostly on the continuation versus discovery mode. And uh, the reason is that a significant fraction of the plays from the Netflix app are continuation. Uh, in fact, if you think of what is the title that you're most likely to watch today, it's going to be the time title that you were watching last time you opened Netflix. That's you know that's the best bet you can put on a given t on a selecting a title. Um, so in the past, the continue watching row was shown on only some devices, and uh, the videos in that row were sorted by how recently you watched them. So if you watched a TV show last night, but a movie halfway the night before the TV show will be placed higher than the movie, and so on. And um, the row appeared um, on the page based on um, some business rules. When and where it would appear would be some, you know, uh, based on a rule-based um, uh, system. So the objective of, um, that we had for working on continue watching or opening it up was to unify the continue watching row experience across all our devices and optimizing the row in uh, two main uh, dimensions. The first dimension is we want to place the row on the page according to how likely you are to be in continuation mode. So if, you're, if you think you're more likely to continue, we want to place it higher and, and vice versa. Um, and also we want to reorder the, the videos on the row not just based on recency but based on how likely you are to actually watch them in the current session. So why do we think we can do better than just recency ranking? You can think of some intuitive patterns. Uh, for example, you might be more likely to resume a video if, you ha if you're in the middle of binge watching a TV show or you have partially watched a movie recently. Or for example, you often watch this particular TV show on this device or around the same, this time of day. These are some intuitive patterns, right? Um, on the other hand, you might be more likely to discover if you have just finished the movie to the end or you've finished all the episodes of a show. Um, or, for example, you haven't been active recently, so you come back after a while and you probably want to discover. Or, or, that, or just that you're almost, you know, basically a pretty uh, new member and you're still exploring the catalog. So um, now, to build a model that can achieve our two goals, uh, we will think of some features, and uh, then we'll focus on each of the two aspects, which is the title ranking model and the row positioning model. Um, let's think of some features that would help us uh, predict uh, which title you will uh, be continuing. Um, we can have some member level features, uh, for example, member subscription, how, uh, how long they have been a member, uh, which country they have signed up from, what languages they speak. Uh, we can have features about how active they have been recently or um, what have been their past ratings or now, nowadays what have they thumbs up uh, or what are their genre preferences and et cetera. We can also have some video level features or features about the interactions of the member with the video. For example, how new is the video to the catalog or how recently have you watched it or how much of it you have watched, right? Um, we can have features about genre or other, other uh, metadata about the video. 
Um, and, uh, you know, also, what else is in the catalog? Maybe there is this new thing that everyone's watching, and then you, you're more likely to ab abandon this show to watch that new thing. So all of this could influence your continuation probability. Um, there are also features about, you know, how popular is this video or how relevant is this video to you, you know, as our personalized ranking uh, engine can guess. And uh, also, we could have a feature that says, well, among other people who watched this same video up to this point, how many of them actually continued this video? Uh, finally, we want to also have the model be uh, context aware. Uh, we want this model to be, you know, to, to use the fact that you're on this particular device or this is the time of day or this is a particular time of week that you may have a habit of watching something and, and also location. So once we have features, um, we build a model for title ranking. Um, to, to build that model, to get training data for that model, we focus on continuation sessions, which is given that you actually watch one of your recently watched titles, which one of these, which one of these titles are you are more likely to watch? So we want to rank the titles, and we want to optimize for how well we can s guess the title that you're more likely to watch and place it higher on the row. So it, it's basically a learn to rank problem and you can use uh, one of several approaches for uh, learning a ranking, such as like linear models or softmax or ensemble methods with, uh, with a ranking objective. Um, as I mentioned, we had the past system was ranking by recency, and that's, a, that's our baseline, and that's a pretty decent baseline for us. Uh, we also used recency of the video as a feature in our title ranking model, and it turned out to be a very influential feature. Um, but when you compare uh, the performance against the baseline, we still see a significant gain. Uh, we also A-B tested, and we measured uh, significant member uh, interaction improvement with this system. Now, as for the row placement model, our objective is to estimate the likelihood that you are in continuation mode versus discovery. So we can basically look at a bunch of sessions and see which of them were the ones that you played from your recently watched titles versus discovery titles. And we build a binary classifier. And once we have that classifier uh, predict a likelihood for us, we can apply one or more thresholds on that to place, to map it to a position on the page, to map uh, basically uh, the continue watching row on the position on the page. Um, so in terms of metrics, uh, we were able to measure this likelihood with a, with a very good uh, classification metric, such as you know, area under the ROC curve. However, the, the harder problem is how to map that into a position. Um, for, for, for classifying sessions into continuation versus discovery, we have false positives or false negatives as errors. If we have false positives, it means we think you are going to continue watching something, and we place the row high, but you actually don't, so we occupy that valuable real estate on the home page unnecessarily. And vice versa, if you actually want to continue, but we don't, um, we don't know that, we place it too low, so it makes it harder for you to find the row. To, um, and then to, by picking the threshold, we're actually trading off the false positive and false negatives. And it's really hard to optimize offline because there are, there are like member experience aspects that are hard to measure offline. So we, we tune that threshold by A-B testing. Um, uh, as a final note, I mentioned uh, con context awareness. So to just test how context aware this can be, uh, one thing I tried personally was I played a cartoon on my iPhone and played, and, and about the same time I played Narcos, which is a, kind of a crime drama on, my, uh, on, on the website. And then I opened the apps, and I indeed see that the rankings are different. And the, on, on the iPhone, the cartoon is higher, higher up versus uh, on the web page where, the, where Narcos is up. And, and these are both driven by the same model. So it's a context-aware model. Finally, as conclusions, 
Um, my takeaway point is it's important to understand different modes of consumption of the service when you're building a recommendation system. And for our particular case, uh, we realized that continuation is a key driver of engagement and optimizing it would help us get uh, improvement in our member experience. And as future works, um, we would ideally want to incorporate this placement and like optimization of the row not as a custom model, but into, integrated into a master model that builds the home page. And finally, going back to our ideal state, the question is, can we actually automatically start playing a title that you have recently watched when we are very confident about it? Thank you. <laughs>